Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Direct Sellers Podcast. You guys, I hope that you enjoyed last week's episode, or was it two weeks ago? I don't even know. But when we had the Pinterest guru come on and share a little bit about Pinterest, I, I hope that you enjoyed that. And I have to say right now, my podcast editor reached out to me and she was like, Rach, whenever you're typing, <laughs> we can hear that. Like you're going to have to mute yourself if you're typing. And I was looking up what she was telling us, like the Pinterest trends and I was typing away. So I apologize if that was a little distracting, but we're back here. I'm not typing. Okay. I'm not looking up any Pinterest trends today. I am going to give you five ways you can start attracting people to your business right now. Five ways you can build your customer list today. Like these are things that you can start today. So in No Pressure Direct Seller, which is my, my program for direct sellers, where I teach direct sellers how to build a profitable and successful business using the no pressure approach that I've created. We talk about this all the time. There are four pieces to a successful direct sales business. You need to be attracting people. Then you need to know how to convert those people into customers and team members. You need to engage, know how to engage your audience and engage your team and engage your customers. And then you need to know how to serve. And we talk about all of that inside no pressure direct seller. Today, we're going to focus on the attract piece, because if you don't have that attract piece, if you're not bringing people into your, into your circle, into your zone, then it's going to be very hard for you to convert. It's going to be very hard for you to engage. And it's going to be very hard for you to serve because you're not going to have anyone to do it with, right? So I'm going to give you five ways that you can start growing that customer list today. I need you to understand a lot of this can be put into place so that it's it's automatic. It happens without you having to do it every single day. Does that make sense? So you could be sleeping and you could be pulling people in to your you know, program or, well, not your program, but into your circle, okay? That's the goal, guys. The goal is for you to set things in place so that you are attracting people, so that you are able to bring in new people all the time without you having to scramble every single day. Does it feel like that sometimes? Does it feel like you are struggling? You're like, I just need more people. I need to get out of my friend zone. I need to get out of my family and friends. I need to get out of this circle. I remember the first time I built my direct sales business. So I've only been in two direct sales businesses. Okay. I've only, I've only had two. One was back in 2015 and it was a jewelry business. And the second is today and it's makeup. But going back in time to my first direct sales business, I really loved going into people's homes and doing home parties until I didn't anymore <laughs> until I got old. But I think something to remember is that it was easier in a way to get beyond your friends and family because at in-home parties, we did games where we would show people what they could get for free if they had their own party and people wanted to have their own party. Like I never had a problem getting more people on my calendar because it was fun. It was a fun experience for these ladies. They got a ton of free jewelry and they could see, I could show them how much free jewelry they got from this little game that I did where I literally stacked up boxes to show them what the average hostess received. Plus everyone was laughing all the time and having a good time. So people wanted to have a party. Now it's a little different. Home parties really aren't the thing anymore. Now, if you're doing home parties, awesome. Ride that wave. But home parties just aren't what they used to be. Online parties aren't what they used to be. When, when I was teaching people how to do Facebook parties, you know, we taught them to do kind of a booking game then too. Things have changed. Things have changed since then. Okay. Online parties aren't what they used to be either. 
So now you have to really figure out how am I going to get more people in? How am I going to get out of my friend circle, out of my family circle without having these parties? Right? That's a big, that's a big thing. So today, like I said, I'm going to share five ways to do that. Now, before I start listing them off, what I want you to know is these, these take a little bit of work. Everything takes a little bit of work though, right? I want to ask you, how committed are you to, to building this business of yours? Like, do you really want it? Do you really want it? Listen, you can make money. You can make good money in this business. You just have to do the work. So if you're committed to doing the work, if you're like, okay, I understand I can't just sit here and people are just going to ask me to buy something. I'm committed to showing up. I'm committed to doing the thing. Then this is going to be for you. But listen, there are a lot of you. I've just experienced this recently who are just kind of want it to happen without doing the effort. Take, you know, and I get it. Hello. How great would that be if we could just wake up in the morning and people just bought from us all the time. (laughs) That would be amazing without us having to do a thing. Unfortunately, that's not how it works, right? We do have to do the work. Something that occurred to me yesterday, I've been creating some things for No Pressure Direct Seller. And I was doing some research because, again, one of the pieces to having a successful and profitable direct sales business is knowing how to serve, is knowing, is serving well serving your audience well, serving your team well, serving your customers well, serving your hostesses well. That's a major part of having a successful business. And so I looked up the definition of serving and something that stuck out to me. And of course it was like, you know, obviously we know what serve means, but the, one of the specific definitions was, uh, let me just look it up because it said to be useful, to be useful. And I thought that's such a cool way of looking at serving rather than just thinking, okay, we're just going to give and we're going to give and we're going to give and we're going to be there for people and we're going to help them. How can you be useful to them? So I want you to think about this. That's the serving piece, but we're going to bring that up to attract. Like how can we be useful and attract people to us so that we can wake up in the morning and go, oh my gosh, I just got a sale. There's some work involved though. Okay, let's figure that out first. So the first way that you can draw people in, attract them, okay, to you, to your list, I've talked about this one before, is to create a freebie or a lead magnet. A freebie is something that is going to pull people in to your circle, okay? What can you offer? What can, how can you be useful? What can you give someone that's digital? I'm not talking a physical product, a digital item that you can create that is useful for your ideal customer. Okay. I'm not even going to dive into being, you know, no identifying your ideal customer. We've talked about that in previous episodes. That is step one. You've got to know who you're speaking to. That's the first thing. You've got to do a little bit of research. What do they need? What are they struggling with? Where are their, you know, hangups? But then when you figure that out, I want you to think about this freebie that you could be creating. So a freebie, like I said, it's a digital product. It could be a checklist. It could be a calendar. It could be a how-to guide. We have actually a whole lot of information and templates inside No Pressure Direct Seller. So if you are a No Pressure Direct Seller, definitely check that out if you haven't already. But it's very important to think about like, how can you serve your audience? How can you be useful to them? What do they, what do they need? So think about your product. What do you sell? So I'm going to use me as an example because it's just easier. All right. So I sell makeup. So I need to think about what does my ideal customer need? What do they struggle with? Well, let's also preface the word struggle here too. Like when I think struggle, I'm like, oh man, they're really struggling with this. Like they're going through some stuff. No, that's not what I'm getting at. What are just some things that they can't do or that they find hard to do? So when it comes to makeup, a lot of people 
don't even know that contouring and highlighting is a thing. And like, why does it need to be a thing? Right? Or how do they apply eye makeup and make the eyes look good? As we get older, y'all, um, our eyes begin to drop like the the skin of under our eyebrow begins to droop a little bit. Awesome. Like getting old is so amazing. Can't even tell you, (laughs) but it starts to droop a little bit. So if you didn't have hooded eyes before, there's a chance that you're going to have hooded eyes later in life. Okay. Uh, Not that much later in life, but you get, you get what I'm saying. All right. Well, I, I didn't know how to apply makeup for that. I never, I'd never had hooded eyes before. So I could create a guide on how to apply makeup for the hooded eye because my ideal customer is definitely a woman in her 40s and 50s, right? Mature skin is I help people who have mature skin because that's who I am. (laughs) That's what I'm doing, right? So that would be a really good freebie, something that would be useful to them, right? As they're learning how to apply makeup differently. So think about what would be useful to your ideal customer. What is something you could create for them that would be useful to them in a digital download format? And what happens is you put it out there. You have it on your Instagram bio. Like if you have Linktree or Milkshake or whatever, you have it there. You have it on your Facebook profile. You have it in your Facebook group. You have it on your website. If you can put it on your website, you have it everywhere everywhere so that if someone comes across you somehow, right, they're going to see that freebie and they're going to want to check it out. But the way they get that freebie, here's how it works, is that they have to give you their email first. Now, again, this is all automated. So what happens is, and this is all in my convert and engage email system, which is part of No Pressure Direct Seller. But what it, how it works is you find an email platform, not your email that your company gives you, but you know, something like ConvertKit or Flowdesk and you create a landing page in there that says, do you want to learn how to, or how to apply eye makeup for the hooded eye? They give their email and it's automated where they then receive the digital download. We can dive into this more if you're interested in the future, but that's, that's one of the best ways to start attracting your ideal customer to you now, because then once they join your email list, then you can nurture them through emails. You can invite them to, to classes where you're teaching various things about, about your product or about, you know, other issues that your ideal customer deals with. Creating a freebie honestly is I believe the number one way that you can start growing that business of yours. Okay. Idea number two is to share one piece of weekly content. Wait, I didn't say that right. Share a piece of content weekly. Okay. So this content, it could be anything. It could be a blog. If you don't have a blog, that's okay. You can start a blog if you like to write. Maybe a vlog if you like to be on 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 a camera, listen, you could just do it on YouTube or Facebook live or Instagram live, wherever you are, do a live video every week, sharing useful information. Maybe you have a podcast. Maybe you just like to, you know, send an email out each week that, that really shares useful information. All of that is great. I do think there's something powerful about doing live video. So whether it be YouTube, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, whatever, there's something really, really powerful about live video. So I would encourage that to maybe be the thing that you focus on. And in this live video, you're sharing something useful. So it's something that you talk about each week. So in this podcast, each week I have a different topic, right? Each week I have a different topic. That's what you should be doing. You should have some kind of live video or podcast or blog somewhere where you are putting out new content each week with a call to action. 
So in my podcast, I talk, you'll hear, if you haven't heard it already, there is information about my free training. That's a call to action. What is the call to action that you are giving your idea, your viewers, your ideal customers? Okay. A call to action doesn't have to be go and buy my product. No, a call to action could be respond to this email. A call to action could be comment below with, you know, with your favorite takeaway, with your biggest takeaway from this. It could be click this link to grab the freebie. Those are call to, calls to action. But when you share a piece of weekly content, every like consistently, you are, number one, creating a relationship with your ideal customers, okay? They're connecting with you. Second of all, they are really, really, really learning and you are building that know, like, and trust factor. And then what happens is we're not going to go into this now, but you can repurpose that, that weekly content. You can take little bits of it, create quotes. You can um, share it elsewhere. You can, I mean, there are so many things that you can do with this content. You can put it into an email. If you, there are so many things you can cut down the videos into smaller bite-sized chunks and put them elsewhere, you know, in various social media outlets in your email, whatever. There are so many things that you can do with it, but just start getting really consistent about sharing a piece of weekly content and you can batch it. This content that this podcast that I'm recording isn't going to go out for a few weeks because we're batching it because we do it ahead of time. We got ahead. Right. So that is something to think about. You don't have to do it that week. You can think ahead and batch it all out and get it all scheduled. Idea number three. And you guys, after last week's podcast episode, this is going to make a lot of sense. But Pinterest, start using Pinterest, dive into using Pinterest. You share pins, link it back to your weekly content, link it back to your freebie. Pins work for you for a very, very long time. Okay. If you want more information, go back and listen to that podcast episode. Um, she also gave a lot of links in there. So that's something to think about as well. Um, but Pinterest, it's working for you. Okay, number four, have a call to action in your link tree or in your milkshake, wherever you have your links on social, have a call to action, meaning sign up for my freebie. Um, it could be get for me, it could be get your free color match because I do free makeup color matches so that I can, you know, help you with your makeup. What is it that you offer? OK, um, maybe it's join my Facebook group, join my VIP Facebook group, whatever it is, there needs to be call to action where they can connect with you at a deeper level. OK, and always be directing people to your links. Always be talking about it. If you have a freebie, you should always be talking about it. You should always like sporadically lead people back to it. You know, on Instagram, I have a start here reel and you can do this. You can pin it and it could in there. It could tell, tell the viewer that you have this freebie where they can connect with you, where they can download it for free. Think about it in these terms. All right. Think about how can you have calls to action? Again, the calls to action do not necessarily need to be by this product. They can be, but they can also, they should also be other things so that people can really get to know you, that they can learn from you so that you become this someone, person that they trust. And number five is show up in stories every day. Yes, your stories are not necessarily bringing new people in, but you are connecting with the people who currently follow you. And with that comes something else. And, and there are actually five more of these topics inside No Pressure Direct Seller. So if you ever end up joining the program, No Pressure Direct Seller, you'll get those additional five ideas on attracting new people. But when you show up in stories, you could really connect with your people your audience at a deeper level. And what happens is, is as you're building that know, like, and trust factor, what happens when you love something? What happens when you really trust someone or when you just appreciate what they offer, you share it, right? And as a result, that thing, that will happen to you too, when you are showing up in your stories daily. And this is hard for some people. It's hard to 
show up in stories and know what to say, I share a little bit of my life. I'm just totally honest. And I'm going to be real. Sometimes I'm like, I've literally not moved from this location in my house. Like I'm at my desk. <laughs> this is where all my stories seem to be. But the reality is, is that's okay. But I try to remember to do it elsewhere. Like if I'm on the way to pick up my daughter or if I'm at the gym or whatever it is, I try to share some stories then so that people are connecting. Okay. So those are five ways that you can start attracting new people to your audience right now. Uh, create a freebie, share a weekly content, pin, 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 use Pinterest, have a call, call to action in your link tree, in your bio, in whatever it is, and direct people there. And then number five is show up in stories every single day. There are five more. So if you come into No Pressure Direct Seller, definitely check that out. It's in the attract section. I am so excited for our episode next week. I'm not going to tell you about it, but it's a surprise. Um, it's, it's, I'm just excited for what's to come here on this podcast. We've got some really good things happening. Anyway, you guys take care. Have a really, really great week. And I will see you next time for our next episode of the Direct Sellers Podcast.